the late great Peter Drucker said that the purpose of a business is to create and keep a customer. And every company in existence today, their core strategy is to convince us through all of their communication and marketing efforts that we'd be far better off as a result of doing business with their organization than not. And they do this because they know that their existence depends on convincing us of that one simple fact. Yet some organizations do this exceedingly well, and other organizations, they seem to struggle with and the reasons why some organizations struggle in this area where others thrive, well, there are many, obviously. But I think the root cause for many of these organizations that seem to be always striving yet never arriving at successfully communicating to us how much better off we'll be as a result of doing business with them lies in another statement that Peter Drucker was also very fond of, and that is, culture eats strategy for breakfast. A lot of times our strategy is self-sabotaged, even unwittingly, because the culture of our organization doesn't support it. The culture of our organization, rather than communicating with authenticity, communicates with duplicity, and most of us, well, we can tell the difference quite effectively. So how do we know within our own organization whether or not we communicate with authenticity or duplicity? I call it the authenticity test. In the next few meetings that we're in, imagine, if you will, that we were going to record the meeting and then send the audio file to every single one of our customers so they can listen to what really goes on behind the scenes, behind closed doors at our organization. When they were done listening to that audio file, how many of our customers would be even more justified in their purchasing decisions? How many of our customers would be re-enthused about doing business with us? And how many of our customers would run from our organization the same way a crowd of people run from a burning building because they came to the shocking and disheartening realization that rather than we're existing to help them get what they truly want, they're nothing more than a vehicle for us to get what we truly want. You know, there's so many books and theories about what creates successful companies, and I guess some of them have a point, and some of them are just absolutely complete rubbish. But the one consistent ingredient I've seen in every single effective CEO that I have worked with in our industry has been a maniacal level of passion and focus on creating transformational experiences for the customer. In other words, not just delivering the results that they want and where they want to be and who and what that individual ultimately wants to become, but an emotively engaging experience that leads them through that journey from where they are to where they wish, hope, and, and, and most sincerely desire to be in the future. And I just want to recognize a couple of these CEOs, people like Mark Smith, David Barton, Patch Evans, Neil Spruce. Now, obviously, <laughs> there are a lot more amazing leaders in our industry than the, just those few. But I thought it was worth the recognition anyway. So, next time you're in a meeting, ask yourself if my customers could hear what we're truly talking about when we think no one's listening. Would they be inspired or discouraged by the prospect of continuing to do business with us.